Hello everybody, uh, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Uh, this is another Q&A video. The question I received from a brother is, if someone were to be saved and baptized in spirit and in water, if they sinned, would they go to hell for it? Or would they be punished in life? Will any punishment take place at all? It says in the Bible that all sins are forgiven, past, present, and future. Well, I'm going to kind of synthesize it down to make the question, <clears throat> will the saved suffer any punish punishment for sins? The, uh, the answer that, uh, short text answer I have here is, it is true uh, that Jesus paid the penalty for all sins for all people. When anyone puts their full confidence in Jesus for eternal life, they receive it instantly. However, as we live our lives, we still live under the law of reaping and sowing. For example, bad health habits cause sickness such as smoking causes cancer. And bad moral decisions have consequences, such as adultery causes divorce, diseases, broken families, etc. Also, God chastises his children. Well, there's the short answer. Uh, let me discuss this further and cite some scriptures. Uh, in Romans 6.23, it says, The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And in John 3.16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And in uh, Matthew 7, 13 and 14, it says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way, that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, that leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Well, basically all of these verses are giving us uh, two possibilities. Uh, John 3.16 says the possibility is uh, if you believeth not in Jesus, you perish. If you believe in Jesus, you have everlasting life. So the, the options are perish or life everlasting. In uh, Romans 6.23, the options are the way of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. So the option is death or eternal life. And if we look at Matthew 13 through 14 again, it says, uh, in that the broad way, the wide gate, that leads to destruction, but the narrow way, it leads unto life. So the options are destruction or life, life everlasting. So that's really what it boils down to. Uh, when, when Jesus... Uh, came down from heaven, and he became a man, uh, he said the reason he did that, he says, uh, do not think I came, I came to be served, but rather to serve and to give my life as a ransom. So Jesus told us the reason he came down was to give his life as a ransom. So he loved us so much that he became a man so that he could die on a cross and 
that served as a ransom for our sins. So by doing that, Jesus took on the penalty for our sins. So we do not have to suffer the penalty of our sins because Jesus suffered the penalty in our place. Uh, we who believe in Jesus as our Savior, uh, we live because Jesus died in our place. We will live forever. We have eternal life when we put our faith in Jesus. Now, and that's settled. It, it's, it never changes. Once we believe in Jesus as our, as our Savior, we receive eternal life instantly, and it is irrevocable. <clears throat> so that's settled. So is there any consequence for sins for Christians? Well, even though uh, we have eternal life and heaven promised to us, we certainly are not going to get away with living a sinful life. Uh, there is the law of reaping and sowing that applies to all of us. So, if we look at, um, let's look at uh, Galatians 6, 7 through 10. It says, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whosoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whosoever sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap, will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. So here we have explained the law of reaping and sowing. And uh, there are consequences when we, we sin. When we live a good life, we're going to reap good things in our lives. Have healthy habits, you're going to probably have health. Uh, you, you make wise decisions and you will benefit from it. You make bad decisions and you will suffer the consequences. We also have, besides the law of reaping and sowing, we have uh, the fact that when we are born again as a child of God, uh, God be becomes our father and we are a child. And in that relationship, God has a responsibility to chastise his children. And that is the same thing that if you are a parent, you have an obligation, if you truly love your children, you have an obligation to punish them, to keep them in line for their own good. And that is discussed in Hebrews 12, 7 through 9. It says, If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, thereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards, and not sons. Furthermore, we have fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? So that makes the point that uh, God is going to chastise us because he's our father and he loves us. Uh, and, and if he didn't chastise us, then uh, that's a sign that he we're not really his son. We're not really a child of God. Uh, we're simply bastards. Uh, let's look at that in a, another translation. It says, as you endure this divine discipline, remember that God is treating you as his own children. Whoever heard of a child who is never disciplined by its father? If God doesn't discipline you as he does all of his children, it means that you are illegitimate and are not really his children at all. 
Since we respected our earthly fathers who disciplined us, shouldn't we submit even more to the discipline of the Father of our spirits and live forever? So here we have really two things to consider. Uh, first, we must uh, understand that our eternal fate is sealed. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit unto the day of redemption. We have eternal life uh, given to us, promised to us by Jesus our Savior because we put our faith and confidence in Him as Savior. So that is settled. But that doesn't mean that we can just go ahead and live our lives however we want uh, without any kinds of consequences in our lives. The, the two things, factors that will affect us is one, the law of reaping and sowing, and also the fact that God, being our Father, will chastise us and correct us because He loves His children. So, the, uh, the answer to your question, brother, is uh, yes, it's settled. Uh, we're never going to uh, end up uh, in that lake of fire. See, those people who don't put their faith in, in Jesus, uh, they are, uh, as it says here in these verses I cited earlier, uh, they are, they perish, uh, they, they are destroyed, uh, and they are put in the lake of fire, suffering the second death. That's not our fate, though. Our fate, our future, is promised eternal life with joy and happiness and bliss and, uh, eternally with God and with our, the fellow saints, all the other believers. So we have a, a beautiful future promised to us and, and that nothing will change that even if we live sinful lives. But we're not going to get away with living sinful lives because the law of reaping and sowing will get you. And also, God will chastise you if you're his child. Okay, I hope that answers your question, and I look forward to uh, everybody else's comments. Bless you in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ.